does NASCAR hate innovation or just Ford? Today we cover a part that scared NASCAR so bad they banned it for life. All right, it's 1987. Bill Elliott, awesome Bill from Dawsonville, sets the fastest lap time at Talladega, over 200 miles an hour. What's NASCAR do? Next year, implements restrictor plates to slow down all the Fords. Another example, 1969, the Boss 429 comes out and Ford starts racing it. Both Mopar and Ford have Hemis, but Chevrolet doesn't. By 1973, they completely eliminated that as an advantage. And somehow they dialed back the cubic inches to be just above what a bored out 350 would be. All right, let's flash back to 1965. Ford comes up with a novel idea. Let's put the camshaft on top of the heads. NASCAR thought that was so exotic that they banned those for life. Almost every manufacturer makes a car with overhead cam now, except the LS. I got one last example from 1957. Now this one part scared NASCAR so bad that they banned it for life. Come take a look, got one over here. Now what you see here is a supercharger. Now it doesn't look like your conventional supercharger. But this is a VR57 Paxton McCulloch supercharger that you could get on a factory 57 Ford. Oh, in 1956, Ford wanted to use, start using supercharger technology on their motors. So they initially were gonna use a Lincoln Continental. The problem with the Lincoln is it became such an expensive car, it didn't make sense because they had to sell at least a minimum of 100 units to be homologated, homologated for NASCAR, to, to race in NASCAR. That's a very hard word, by the way. <laughs> 60s, Almost. and it was home, homologated. I don't know how to say that word. Okay, forget that one. Is that they, build on, they built some custom sedans, a few Sunliners, in preparation for the Daytona Speed Week on Daytona Beach. They got the blower accepted to be useful to use in NASCAR. And they, had, they made about 1,300 streetcars and Thunderbirds that had this motor. This particular example has the, uh, what's called the F-code package is what they signified on the serial number. That's what told you that the car had a supercharger from the factory. Ford also made sure that they wanted Paxton to build a supercharger that was specifically a Ford-looking supercharger. So instead of some of the other blowers that were smooth on the outside, the VR57 has a ribbed case so that you can instantly tell that it's a factory Ford supercharger. Maybe. So the supercharger package was available on any body style. So there were uh, there were quite a few retractables that had this supercharged F-code option. Um, American Red Cross, there's records that they actually had a supercharged station wagon. The uh, Minnesota Highway Patrol had a fleet of supercharged 57 Fords that they used. So the, the supercharged combo came out in the early part of 57. They got geared up for it, and then uh, Ford immediately started dominating the NASCAR races. So at the end of the season, uh, mid-year, they banned the supercharger, of course, but even only having the supercharger option feature for just a few months, Ford still was able to have 27 wins versus Chevrolet's 18. So the uh, supercharged option, the F-code option, was listed as a 300 horsepower uh, engine package. So 300 horsepower uh, was one horsepower per cubic inch approximately. The uh, NASCAR versions had a slightly hotter camshaft, so the uh, early dyno specs were around 340 was the estimated horsepower. Drag In drag racing, they actually were pretty successful. Um, there were some, uh, there was a, a guy raced a Ranchero that was a Ford-sponsored car. Um, later in the 60s, when they started doing the junior stock type racing, there was a 57 Ford that raced in those classes with the uh, F-Code supercharged package. Uh, Larry Walker was his name, and he had a 57 business sedan. The car was so dominating in, in, in the drag racing in NHR, NHRA that they made a NHRA inspector ride with him with their own boost gauge to make sure that he wasn't cheating. What made you get into Y blocks? So my actually what got me into Y blocks is 57 Fords. So I've been a fan of 57 Fords all my life. And the Y block is what they used as the performance motor in 57. And so I was able to get a Paxton supercharged 57 Ford and uh, I just kept developing uh, durability so that I could use this car regularly to do some uh, nostalgia drag racing, some touring and uh, so lots of street driving. This is the original 312 Y block, but I actually upgraded the cam, the crankshaft to a Moldex billet crank so that it added extra stroke that en enabled me to 
convert the cubic inches to 352 cubic inches. Also have uh, extensively ported cylinder heads. It's got a pretty aggressive camshaft. You'll hear that when it starts up. And I still am using the uh, Paxton VR57 blower, which I've internally converted to the uh, guts out of a late model, like an SN93 supercharger, to help the reliability issue. Still uses the factory type of carburetor. It's a Holley carburetor, and the nickname for them is a teapot, which to many looks like a two-barrel carburetor, a very small carburetor. But what, what, how the carburetor is made is the bowls are inside the bonnet. So what that helps is with pressurization of the bowls. It's uh, similar to the atmospheric pressure. And so the carburetor is a different design, which was used on the 56 Lincoln, is where that carburetor initially came from. This, car, this was originally an all-black two-door sedan, which would have been the lightweight car, which was what you would have chose for if you were drag racing or NASCAR racing in this car. So it's a factory black car with the high horsepower engine. Uh, currently, this has a uh, what they call a satin finish um, that kind of has American graffiti type of a look to it. it as uh, steel wheels and dog dish hubcaps. Occasionally, I have mag wheels. Depending on the event, I can change the look of the car. So this is the base custom sedan. So this is the uh, plain Jane uh, simplest vehicle, which makes an excellent uh, race car. So this was offered as a radio delete car, clock delete. Now this one does have a heater. There were many heater delete cars. These originally don't even have armrest, or um, uh, many of them even had cigarette lighter deletes and uh, one sun visor. Oh,